Well, good afternoon or morning, as the case may be, for wherever you are. And uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's virtual Thursday training. Uh, my name is Ryan Dennett, and I'm one of the regional trainers here for emergency reporting. Uh, as you know, today's topic is going to be uh, discussing the, the daily log um, and really how we can um, turn information into intelligence, so to speak. I'm going to get some started with some uh, brief introductory things, and then we'll get right into uh, the meat of the topic itself. Um, I do have, uh, I know I have Sarah on here to help answer any questions that may arise. So uh, if you have questions going throughout, please feel free to submit a question. We'll uh, try to get that answered for you. So there'll be really be two parts um, to today's uh discussion and what that is, is going to be the setup of the daily log um, and how to make it work for you and then uh, being able to take that information uh, and in using reports uh, to suit your needs and so as I said my name is Ryan Dennett I'm a regional trainer here for emergency reporting. I've been with the company since um, March of this year. Uh, currently am a training captain here for the Gorham Fire Department. I am a paid on call um, member and I've been serving since 2003 and I've been uh, working in the training division for the past year and a half. I'm also a career firefighter uh, for the town of Brunswick, Maine. Um, and going on five and a half years uh, with that department. Both of uh, these departments, we currently use uh, emergency reporting as our primary reporting and records management uh, system. Um, and uh, as you can see on the screen, I've uh, been a uh, customer since 2010. Um, started with the uh, Brunswick Fire Department um, back in 2010 and 2011 is when Gorham came on board. Uh, so you can see I've got uh, about four years of experience working with the system. I'd like to point out a couple of different training opportunities that we uh, have available uh, to you. Uh, we have our regional training conferences, our RTCs, uh, which you can actually see uh, picture here of the, the most recent one that we did uh, down at the Lockheed Martin facility in Texas. Uh, what these are, these are a, a, a three-day training event. Uh, we also offer on-site trainings which are specific to um, your individual department uh, as well as uh, various different online options uh, for you as well. So our regional training conferences are comprised of what we call the emergency reporting experience. Uh, what it is is broken down into three days of training, as I mentioned. Uh, the, the first day is what we call the essentials, and this is more or less an overview of the majority of the modules of the system, uh, especially the ones that are the most commonly used. Uh, integration is uh, day two and three. That's where we really get into um, what we can do to meet your individual needs. Uh, and then the lead ER uh, really spreads out over uh, all three days in bits and pieces. And uh, this is more focused on um, the administration of the system as well as getting the information out of the system, things like the reports. Uh, got a couple different ways that you can uh, find out about uh, the upcoming trainings that we offer. Um, and I'm sure you've noticed that when you go to log in, you'll often find uh, information here right on the login screen. Uh, if you are uh, interested in um, having some training, uh, 
again, check out the, uh, the schedule, uh, but you can also contact us at training at emergency reporting.com. So for right now, uh, there are currently no regional training conferences scheduled for 2015. We're still in the uh, planning stages for that. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't have any to share with you right now, but definitely keep your eyes out uh, as we should be posting some of those soon, especially the ones for the, the first quarter of the year. So since December 1st, we've had uh, 20 new or uh, upgraded customers. Those are the customers that have uh, increased uh, their package, adding on things like the Google mapping uh, or the vision packages. So definitely I would like to thank all of you uh, for, your, uh, for your business, and hopefully we can um, serve you well. So find the latest information about the about the system uh, as well as upcoming uh, trainings. Uh, you can find that right there on the, the home page in the notifications bar or by going to the support button. I'm sure you noticed uh, if you've logged in today, uh, we have the notification for this training that was showing up there right there at the top of your home page. Uh, it's also a great place to keep updated of any other things that are going on in the system and keeping up to date on those. But as a customer, somebody that's using the system on a daily basis, your feedback is vital to uh, the success of us as a company and so what we have, if you haven't had the chance to check it out, is the user voice area. This is where you can provide your feedback um, as a customer, things that you would like to see uh, improved, uh, any additions made. And you can check that out at feedback.emergencyreporting.com. It's a great place to see what other users uh, are looking for as well, and may just even give you some uh, ideas of how you can improve your usage of the system. So we'll go ahead and jump right in, uh, starting off with the objectives of, of what we hope to uh, get out of today's training session. Um, we're gonna cover uh, the daily log settings, as well as adding items to the daily log. And part of you know, adding items uh, is being able to view those items on a, on a daily basis right there on our home screen. And then we'll also go over some of the reports uh, that are associated with the daily log. And really, Hopefully, at the end of the day, uh, you've learned how to make some of these reports work for you and your specific needs. Um, the, the whole intent of um, today's session is to help you improve your tracking of different activities and also being able to use that data for justification purposes. Um, we all know that um, budgets are tight um, and we're currently under uh, continually under scrutiny so being able to uh, justify um, our needs as well as what we actually do is uh, crucial so uh, again I'd like to thank you for joining me today and we'll go get ahead and, and uh, get started as I said if you have any questions um, throughout the presentation um, please go ahead and uh, submit them and I'll try to get them answered. Uh, and like I said, I think Sarah's joined in today, so hopefully she can um, answer the questions as well. So starting out uh, our daily log, uh, 
as hopefully you're aware, uh, is located at the very bottom of your home screen. Uh, you can see that uh, right now I'm logged into our, one of our training accounts. Uh, and my daily log is uh, currently shows nothing um, for the day. Uh, later on, when we get into the reports, I'm actually going to switch over to uh, one of my live accounts. Uh, so that that way the uh, the data that we're pulling out of the reports is realistic um, and can easily show some of the, the information that we might be looking for. The first thing I really want to talk about is the, the setup uh, of the daily log. And uh, if there are any of you that don't have um, access to the administration module. You won't be able to do this in your account, uh, but definitely you know, pay attention if there's things that uh, you want to see in your department. All you have to do is be able to uh, relay this information to one of your system administrators. So we're going to go ahead and enter into the administration module. And we have three options for our daily log settings. You'll find that down here, uh, kind of towards the bottom left. Um, I'll get to the, the first one here in just a minute, and that's the actual activity code list. The next one down, this is our, our rollover time. And this is what determines um, when the break is between days um, on our homepage view of the daily log. So if you are a um, career department or you're a um, department that has per diem staffing, what my recommendation is that you set this to your morning shift change. Uh, you can only set one rollover time per day. Um, so your daily log is clumped in a 24 hour period. So if you happen to run a shift that's a, a split shift like a 10 hour days and 14 hour nights. Uh, you can't split it between the two shifts. Uh, what this would do is you really want to set this as the, um, the morning shift change time. In this case, we have this set for uh, an eight o'clock uh, shift change time. For those of you in the volunteer world, normally what we say is you set it at midnight, then it keeps that as actual calendar days. Now going into the activity code list, um, and this is a this is our training account here. We've kind of narrowed some of these down. We don't have a lot of options, and you'll actually notice uh, that the defaults that we have built into the system are actually uh, quite a bit larger than this. Um, and the idea behind that is we're trying to give you a lot of different options to start with um, and things to think about and how you might want to set your account up. So really, this is the, the foundation uh, of being able to track information. Um, if you find something that you want to, to add, that you want to track a, a particular uh, task or a function that's uh, done on a, a frequent, reoccurring basis, uh, something that's important to you, for tracking, you can create your own um, activity code simply by clicking on the add activity code. Um, give it a short um, code to it and then a, a, a longer uh, title description. Uh, you'll see that a lot of you know our codes are short, you know, kind of maybe abbreviations, and then our, our actual title is something that um, is describing what that code is. Um, so like I said, this is, this is the foundation. This is where you're going to set up the things that are important to you, things that you want to track. Uh, and again, where I said that the, the default listing is large, there's going to be things in there that don't uh, pertain to your department. Simply delete them out um, and, and make this what you need. I would uh, strongly suggest uh, that anything that 
doesn't pertain to your permit, you just take it out. It's one less option that people have to choose from, and it's going to ensure that what you're tracking is uh, the information um, that you're looking at collecting. Uh, the last area that we have here in the settings is the default activity codes. And what this is, there's three areas in the system that will automatically dump information um, into the daily log. And that's incidents, trainings, and inspections. Um, you may be asking why, well, if there's three of them, why are only two showing up here? And the reason that inspections isn't showing up, if you're not familiar with it, is that when you create an inspection form, you're actually uh, creating how um, that gets dumped into uh, the daily log from there. Uh, if uh, for whatever reason you choose not to have um, a code assigned to the automatic dump, you can simply clear it out. Uh, but I like uh, suggesting that you have these pre-filled because that's really how you're going to be able to collect accurate data. So that's the, the, uh, the foundation of the, the daily log and the settings. Uh, go out back to our homepage here, and we'll actually go through um, how we can enter our data in. And before I talk about navigating the daily log um, here on the homepage, uh, we're actually going to put some information in. So I'll, I'll create a new log entry. Do, do a manual log entry, so anything that's not automatically filled in, the trainings and the incidents. What we need to do is click on the Add to Log. Notice that, um, much like in the rest of the system, anything that's read is a required. So we have to have a start, date, and time um, associated uh, with this log entry in order to enter it. The rest of the information is uh, completely optional. Uh, that being said, the end date and time uh, is very important if you want to be able to collect accurate information. And you'll see as we get into some of the reports uh, a little bit later on, um, there are reports that we can pull to see how much time is actually spent doing different activities. Uh, well, the only way that that's going to work out for us is if we have um, not only the start time, but the end time. Uh, so we also have our, our quick fills here to the right. Um, and then our activity code drop down list. This is based on that list that we just uh, went over in the settings. Uh, so in this case, I want to log that physical training um, was done. Uh, notice we do have our, uh, our spell check associated with this um, notes narrative. Uh, so you can always check your spelling. And then if um, the particular activity um, involved an apparatus, what we can do is we can select um, an apparatus from our listing here. Um, at this time, we only can select one apparatus per entry. Uh, so un unfortunately, uh, if we had, if we were logging, uh, say, a parade detail, and we had engine two and engine three that were both uh, involved in that parade, we'd have to do two separate entries for right now. Can, however, you can add multiple personnel. If you were the only person uh, that was involved in this uh, activity, uh, you can simply check the me box and, and move on. Or um, you can click the list button. It will bring up a, a larger list of, uh, of all your personnel. Um, you know, add those uh, personnel in. You'll see that because I had uh, myself checked in that me box, when I open up this list, I am checked here as well. Uh, if you're using the daily roster, 
uh, and you had assigned an apparatus here, uh, you would have the ability to fill uh, from the roster. So in this case, um, if I had the daily roster built, I had personnel that were assigned to engine two, and we all did a, a, a crew workout. Um, I could click on engine two, open up my list here, and just click fill from roster, uh, and that would attach everybody that was assigned to engine two. Uh, I'm going to hit submit. Now that submits my, my personnel that are involved in this activity. And then I'm going to hit the add. And you'll now notice that I have um, this log entry that has been entered into uh, the daily log here. So from here, navigating through the daily log on a on a day to day basis is fairly simple. Uh, if I wanted to see what was done yesterday, I can click on the back button here to the left of the date, and it's going to take me to the 17th. Uh, and I can see that there was a training that was done. Same thing, go back a day, or I can simply enter in uh, the date that I want to go to and it will take me there. Uh, I also notice that we have two options here on the left in this drop down. We have show for current station and show for all stations. Um, when I select show for all stations, you'll see an additional line that is visible and that's showing what station this is assigned to. So with that, uh, when you log into the system, uh, whether it's uh, in the morning uh, at shift change or if you're just logging in, for, say, as a, as a volunteer coming to the station to log activity, the first thing that is really important uh, when using the daily log when you're in an apartment that has multiple stations is making sure that at the top of the screen here on your home page to the right of your name, that the station is showing where you are physically going to be logging activity. Uh, and if your account is set up to do so, you can change your station uh, by clicking the stage, change station or shift icon. Now I change to uh, station five because I'm showing for all stations. I can still see that activity that I logged on, at station six, but if I show for current station, um, that's now going to disappear. Um, the idea behind this is in um, departments with multiple stations that are doing, um, you know, a lot of log entries. By being able to see for your your current station, it really narrows down to seeing only the things that are immediately important to you. But the show for all stations still gives you that ability uh, to see more information. So this is the, the, the basics of um, adding items manually to the daily log um, and, and viewing um, day to day. This is just a quick way to get a glimpse of everything that went on for a particular day. Um, for instance, uh, when I go to work tomorrow morning, I could come in here. I'm going to see essentially a blank daily log because we haven't done anything for the day. If I wanted to see everything that was done by the crew that's working today, simply hit the back button. I can see uh, everything that they logged. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to uh, the reports section. Because uh, this is really the the important aspect of of what the the training is covering. Um, it's easy enough to add items into the daily log, but from a tracking or justification purpose, um, we really want to be able to extract that information. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, my live work account here, and I'm going to go ahead and jump into the reports module. And to access uh, the daily log, what we want to do is we want to enter in uh, to the daybook section here. 
And now you'll notice that the daily log uh, pops up here. By clicking on that, we have a bunch of different options here. And this is still not getting even down into the individual reports. These are just subcategories um, for uh, the daily log reports. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them simply because there's a lot of reports that would take a lot of time. I am going to highlight on uh, some of the reports that I think are valuable um, and good to um, to use and to start out with. Um, one of the things that I always try to suggest uh, to people uh, when they're looking for reports is just take the time, go in, um, view all the different reports in a category to see what they look like. Uh, many of the reports that we have in our system have been um, requested by users uh, because to meet their uh, specific needs. So the needs of one department do not always meet the needs of another department. Um, that's why I, I really suggest just go in, um, try out some of the different reports, see what they look like. Uh, Cause that's going to uh, take your data and you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead, go into the first category here, the activity codes. Um, if you're not uh, completely familiar with um, running reports and um, knowing what to look for, uh, some of the things that uh, are a common misconception is you'll notice that in this case here, we have daily log items for activity code, and then we have one here that says per activity code. Uh, anytime that you're seeing a four, it's going to allow you uh, to select um, so this one here, I'm going to go to uh, daily log items for activity code per personnel for date range so that I know when I'm looking at this, because it says for activity code and for date range, that those are going to be variables that I can select. Um, you notice that in this report, we kind of get thrown off because we also see a personnel picky here as well. The reason it says per personnel is because it's going to be sorted um, per personnel in our report. So go ahead and we'll run this report in just a minute and we'll see how this looks. So our activity code, uh, this is allowing us to choose one activity code. In this case, um, I'm going to choose physical fitness. Uh, I know it's not going to be a lot of things that pop up because um, unfortunately, um, people aren't always great about logging everything that they do. Uh, so with the personnel picker, and you can see this is one of our newer uh, personnel pickers, we do have the option uh, to pick multiple. Um, so what you could do is you could actually come in here and um, create a listing of personnel based on a shift. So in this case, I want to see only the people that are assigned to my crew. I see them. I can add all of them. If I wanted to, I could remember the selection as crew four. Hit OK. Now it's created that uh, selection in my saved groupings. So every time I want to run a, this report, um, I can come in and select just crew four if I want to see just my personnel. Um, we have our date picker allowing you to choose either a start date, end date, do it by month, uh, by quarter, or by year. In this case, I want to run this report for the entire year. So this is where I was talking about this is uh, how the per personnel comes in. This is breaking this report down um, into groupings by each person. So this particular report um, is a listing of every single log entry that meets this criteria. We have our start times and our end times. Uh, one of the things that you notice that we do not have for this particular report is a tally of um, total time. Some of the other reports have that, and uh, 
we'll show you that uh, because that, like I said before, that's something that uh, can be very important. You want to be able to show how much time is actually spent um, doing activities. A uh, couple of things of note. Uh, if you aren't familiar, each uh, report has what we call a document ID number, and that's found down in the bottom right-hand corner. So for this particular report, it's 1048. If I knew that report number, I can come up to my search box here at the top and enter that report number in, hit search, and it will take me directly to that report. Uh, same thing can be done simply by a text search. We can search for, you know, for daily log. And we could, we'll come up with any of the reports uh, that have to do with the daily log, uh, either in the title or the description. One of the things to keep in mind uh, when you do a search for reports like this, um, the reports are going to be uh, sorted numerically. So it's not going to be the, necessarily the most relevant first. Um, let's just keep that in mind. Go back here to my reports and show you one more thing. You'll notice that when we're looking at our reports, we have the add to favorites. Um, in this case, the report that I was just on, I don't see that because I've already added to my favorites. It's a report that I like, I'm going to use on a, on a regular basis. Um, up at the top, we have our, our favorites button, uh, which allows us to go in uh, and see those reports that we use on a regular basis. In this case, that report that we just ran uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, so let me go through and I'm going to go ahead and hit these three. These are the ones that I feel are most relevant, at least for the things that um, my department tracks. And again, this is why I say, you know, go in and, and look at the different reports and see what works for you. So in this case, um, we're able to select our activity code again. This time we do have a pick multiple option. Uh, in case you didn't notice that last report we just ran, for activity codes only allowed choosing one code. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to choose the, the fitness again um, and do it for the year. And this is to kind of just show um, how the different reports look. This particular report um, is breaking down, again, each log entry, uh, starting with the earliest date, and it's going to be working its way down. And these are all um, sequential, so it's not breaking it down by personnel. In the event that you have multiple people um, attached to one log entry, like we do right here, um, it will actually attach them all together. Uh, now, you see with this one here, this is actually a great example. Um, in this case, uh, my captain log that we did an hour and a half of you know, physical fitness, and we were interrupted by calls. Uh, well, he put in the actual um, time that we started doing our PT and the time that we ended doing it, uh, which actually comes out to three hours. So one of the issues that we have here is that even though we only did an hour and a half of PT because we were interrupted. Um, if you put your actual start time and your end time, it's going to give a, a false um, reading, so to say. Um, so there are times where in order to accurately record how much time was spent on activity, if there were interruptions, uh, you may have to kind of fudge the entries to make the, the length of time accurate to what it really was. This last one in my favorites, and th these were all in that same uh, subcategory uh, that we first went into. Uh, this one is hours spent. Uh, so this is an overall kind of summary of our different um, activities. In this case, I'm, again, I'm going to do for the entire year. 
by doing your, this one has the ability to break down for a start time. So if you wanted to only see activities that were done, uh, say between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., you have that ability to uh, adjust that here uh, or to do the, the full uh, day, do your start time at midnight and your end time at 2300. The 2300 is for that hour block. So even something that's logged at 2330 is still going to fall into this. It's just based on what that hour block is. So here, like I said, this is a summary report. It's going to break down. It's going to list every single activity code that we have uh, and how many um, items there were for each one of those entries, the total time uh, spent on it, um, and what the percentage is of that total time. Uh, no surprise here that... Um, our alarm response is the majority of our time. And that's simply because these are things that we're logging, not our total time um, on shift. So a lot of downtime, and that unfortunately doesn't get logged any way. Um, notice that our miscellaneous for my department is high because that's where we throw um, a lot of the things that we do. There's only a, a few things that we have that are, are very specific that we track. So this is one of those areas where you could actually uh, find out how much time you're spending on a particular activity uh, and how it relates to the rest of the, the activities that you're performing. Going back into that same category, I'm just going to show you one of these other reports. So you see we have the ability to add to a favorites directly from here. A lot of times we may not know that we want this report added to our favorites until we've actually run it. So in this case, I'm going to choose this report down here, our daily log items for activity code for date range. So I want to see, I'm just going to stick with the fitness one. It's, uh, it's easy. I want to do this for the year. This one here, you'll notice we have the ability to sort um, in a couple of different manners. Uh, we can sort by start date. So this is going to group um, everything together um, and just have it sorted by date, uh, very similar to that second report that we looked at. So what I can do is I can create this report. Now everything knows we start off um, by date. This one also gives the, the duration. There is no total associated with this, though. This is just a listing of each of your daily log um, entries. If I were to choose um, by station, the difference is now it's going to group it, um, should be grouping it by station. Um, so in this case, we had uh, a few entries that nobody would assign to a station when they made these entries. Uh, so therefore, it's not going to actually attach a station to the entry. So it puts them um, as a blank entry. And now I see station one, and again, it's gonna be sorted by date from here on out, but it keeps them all together. So we've got our two different stations and they're separated. So those are the, some of the basics of our, our activity codes. Um, Jumping down just real briefly to the miscellaneous items, uh, what we'll find is there's only one uh, report in here, uh, but these are daily log items that have bad end dates. Uh, so for instance, you want to go in and, and see if somebody did not put in um, an end date and time, uh, you could run this report here. Um, and you'd find that underneath your miscellaneous items. Uh, if you're looking at... Uh, tracking things um, either for an individual person. Uh, in this case here, the daily log items for personnel for date range. Uh, this is one of the reports here. So I want to see just for myself um, what I've done. This allows it to, uh, as you can see, how we want to sort uh, the information. In this case, I'm going to sort by activity code because I want all of those uh, grouped together. 
this is a great way to really uh, pull information uh, that's specific to uh, an individual to see what they've done over a period of time. Uh, in this case, we've got uh, our alarm response. So I'm going to see all of those uh, entries here, which is the, the majority of things. Of course, I did for the year, so we're having a, a lot here. Um, move on. Our daily checks. Again, this is just grouping them uh, by the, the different activity codes. If I like this report from here, I can click the Add to Favorites. And this is why I was saying a lot of times we don't know that we want to favorite a report until we've actually gone in and run it. So this is where the Add to Favorites button here really comes in handy because we can be viewing this report um, and then decide whether we like it without having to go back. Uh, the other things that you will notice too, um, at the, above the report we have um, the breadcrumbs. So what I can do is I can just quickly jump back to uh, the daily log and different reports. A lot, a lot of times what we want to do is we want to see things um, for apparatus, um, for the justification purposes, make, showing that um, an apparatus is actually being active. It's um, um, doing a lot throughout the year, or in this case, I'm going to run um, quarter four um, and see what uh, has actually been attached to, in this case, our tower truck uh, for the year. This is one of the, uh, the reports. It's just a listing of um, the different um, log entries. See, again, chronological. Um, but a way to see what's, being, uh, what's been done for that um, apparatus over the given period of time. Um, similar, we get a few more options uh, for station. Um, believe um, this one here is going to again give us uh, the listing um, chronologically, if I remember the report correctly. Oh, this was actually our our log for the day um, uh, with our, our, our daily roster. That's the one I was thinking of. And then this one. So as you can see, uh, I'll, the reports all have uh, a little bit of a, a difference to them uh, of what they're going to display um, and, and how they display that information, um, which comes back to the, the differences between um, agencies uh, and how um, we need to record our information, what we want displayed, what we need um, to have tracked. It's not easy to say that this is the, the report that's going to work best for you because your needs are different than um, my agency's needs. Again, this is one of the, the, the logs by station. Um, and then really this, this last section here is the listing of the daily logs. Um, and very similar to, to things that we've seen. This is a more, this is one of the, the most uh, comprehensive reports um, showing a, a wide variety of uh, the information. So seeing not only, you know, the station, but the apparatus and all the personnel as well. And, um, one of the benefits to this report here is you can see how that log entry uh, was added. Uh, in this case, you'll notice that they, we have the system, and those are those automatic uh, prefills. 
Uh, so from um, the incidents or the trainings or inspections. Uh, and then here you can see um, the actual manual log entry, who did uh, the different items. So really that's kind of a, uh, a brief overview on, on using the daily log and then being able to pull um, some information out of it. Hopefully some of the reports that I've, I've shown you, uh, you, you'll find beneficial and be able to uh, test some of those out to see if they're going to work for your agency. Um, we understand that not everything is perfect for everyone. Um, if there is a specific uh, thing that you need um, to be able to gather information on that you can't do in one of the reports, um, by all means, uh, contact uh, support and they'll, they'll help you through the process of um, requesting a report um, and having one built uh, to meet your specific needs. So it's really the most important thing. Just go in, play around with the different reports uh, and see what's going to work best for you. Uh, so hopefully this is going to give you an understand of, understanding of how uh, Things are broken down within the reports module and how you can go in there and find what you're looking for. Um, don't forget, you've got the, the search box up at the top so you can um, type in um, criteria that you're looking for and that will help kind of narrow those results down a little bit. So at this point, we're about 10 minutes under the hour. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and if, if anybody has any questions, um, that you'd like answered, go ahead and throw them out. I know I said go ahead and do that throughout the, uh, the presentation. I haven't seen any, but at this point, we'll go ahead and just open that up uh, for any final uh, questions. So I do uh, thank you guys for all, all attending, and I, I hope this has been a bit beneficial for you.